Hey guys, welcome, welcome to Interstage Window. Oh my god, what's this? It's it, a face! I oh my god! A mission voice in the background! I have a face! It's true. Landon actually does have a face, y'all. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. I wasn't I, sure for the longest time, it's but been now a mystery. we know. <laughs> All of these years, I am finally doing a face reveal, uh, just in you know shadowed darkness where it's really hard to see my face currently, but that's fine. We're going to fix that later, though. Right now, we just want to make sure we can get through a whole stream with the camera working. But it worked last time. We just didn't actually show Landon's face. So that was the experiment, the little background thing that we talked about a week before last. So we're going to actually have her on camera going forward. So really, really excited about that. It's success. I'm happy about it. Uh, you get to see all the funny faces I make during stream because they happen quite often. <laughs> We just never were graced with your presence before to where we could actually see it. So, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, while I get the game going and stuff, uh, Landon, what are we going to talk about today? Today we're going to talk about uh, RP rules and rules within a group RP. What rules we like, what rules we don't like, what rules are we consider necessary. Uh, rules, 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 rules. Oh my god, too many rules. I'm done already. So many rules. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, unfortunately, as much as we all live to love to live in an, you know, anarchic society where there are no rules, no hierarchy, rules do keep the peace and keep things running smoothly. So even if it sucks, they are a thing that helps people rule things. <laughs> it's true because the thing is like you know we're all about no unjust hierarchies but the truth is some hierarchies are just and necessary and yeah. so we're going to talk we're going to get into all of that in regards to running an rp group so very low stakes in that regard but you still do need some rules at least i've never successfully run an rp with no rules um if you figure out how please let me know hit me up I, i'm really curious <laughs> me, yeah i'm like i don't even know what that would look like yeah it would be really weird uh, oh we start the day with landon and her love that's right and remember she's pregnant so we'll see if we have um right. we have the baby this time baby all right so fun. yeah so that being said landon what's your favorite thing this week Ooh, um that's a great question so, uh, <laughs> sorry, it's so many things ran through my head. One of the <laughs> things, though, is that I bought myself a bike for graduation, oh. uh, and it arrived, and it took me four hours to put it together, but I put it together by myself, like the grown-ass woman that I am. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> thank you. It was very, very nice. Um, it's a little beach cruiser. It's very cute. I live about a mile from the beach, like a white sand beach. Uh, so I was like thinking about it and I was like, it's really ridiculous driving around this area in the summer. And it's equally as ridiculous walking because I hate walking to not go anywhere. Like it's my least favorite activity in the world. So I was like a bike though. Riding a bike, I love doing that because at least you get to go places. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, I guess I'm more of a walker myself, but um, but you know I had a bike as a kid and that sort of stuff, and they're very very useful to get around quickly. They are. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I um, I just feel like after walking for 15 minutes, you haven't made much progress. <laughs> oh well, so I'm like, yeah. I'm all about going places with intention, quickly and fast. I am not a smell the roses while we're doing it kind of person so <laughs> well i can't really argue with that that is definitely true um so you're right there for sure but um what about you karen what was your favorite thing this week okay so my favorite thing um i may be a, fa a fake favorite thing and then we'll talk about what i actually want to talk about my <laughs> fake favorite thing this week is the fact that we have landed on camera I'm really so excited for that. I think that's wonderful. Um, we wanted to get Landon on camera for so long, y'all. Like, just so long. Like, it's it's hard for me to express. And then, um, and we finally, finally made it happen. Uh, you know, like, what, we've been doing this show for almost a year. Like, we're, we're about to be at our one-year anniversary. And, uh, and we finally got her, got her on. Hey, Jane, welcome. Happy to have you here today. Yes, we're simming today. We're simming. 
that's my that's my favorite thing but that's actually kind of a fake favorite thing because what i really want to talk about is the kittens which so... rightfully should by the way kittens <laughs> should be prioritized above me uh there are very <laughs> things in the world that i that i think that's true on and kittens is one of them <laughs> <laughs> yes okay so here's the kitten update y'all so um i have a four day weekend this weekend um i'm actually going to be off on monday and tuesday and at this point, like I told, I told some of y'all that watch my Thursday streams, but I just want to update here too. Um, so I told some of y'all that uh, like the moms basically did everything for the cats for the first like month, but for this second month that we're almost um, done with now of me having the kittens, it's really been me. So I empty that litter box, no kidding, like four times a day now. They go through an entire bag of cat food in six days. Um, it's ridiculous. Like I can't do it no more. So. Because of this four day weekend that we're having, I'm taking advantage of that to find homes for the kittens. And we have found homes for three of the kittens already. So we found ho a home for Midnight, uh, we found a home for King, and we found a home for Big Girl. And then we're keeping Dragon and Oreo. So there's three more kittens that need homes and we need to find homes for the two moms. Um, I'm searching everywhere that'll let me search. You know, there's a lot of places that are like, you're not allowed to sell animals. Like, well, I'm not trying to sell animals, but they keep deleting my posts anyways. <laughs> um so um i mean it's free like i'm not charging anybody anything because these cats as you all know have not been to the vet or anything like that so the adoption fee is please take them to the freaking vet that's the fee that's please get so <laughs> pet and please get them spay and neutered thank that's you right. very much <laughs> that's it that's all i'm that's all i'm concerned about so um you know i'm i'm not i'm not like doing any of that uh but still my post keeps getting deleted whatever so what that means is that I'm um, looking for homes for them, trying to find people that will take them, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, and uh, it's taken a lot of energy, but that's been that's my favorite thing, getting three of the cats uh, out of my house <laughs> and working on for the other three and the moms to get them out of the house too. And welcome, Ty. So happy to have like you here. To slowly actually take your house back from the kitten mafia that's currently running it maybe maybe soon i can get my um my bedroom back because i do not have access to my bedroom right now <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> yeah that's where they've been quarantining because you know coke doesn't get along with queen they both decided they have to be alpha cats and well that's just not going to happen so um instead like basically coke if we let her out she'll stalk the house and just like hunt down queen so you know we're not going to let her out obviously so they've been in the master bedroom uh this whole time <laughs> have you have you with the kittens that you're keeping have you done anything with them oh yeah they we bring them out in the evenings when we're all there and we can monitor you know how they're getting along with our cats so um and we haven't really had any issues there uh queen was a, a little bit wary of the kittens at first did a little bit of hissing but there's been no fights there's been no serious issues, um, and she stopped hissing even at this point. So, you know, they're doing good. No no problems there. That's awesome. There's a room. It's all yeah, good so. news. Yeah, very, very good. So everything's going good with the two kittens that we're keeping. Um, no issues there. Well, overall, it sounds like it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And hopefully maybe a watcher or a subscriber or... Uh, someone from a random website will come and take the kittens that you need taken away. <laughs> yeah, so if anybody wants kittens, know that you that I'm still trying, you know, today, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, still trying to find homes for them. So if y'all's interest is peaked, please hit me up. I'm in South Carolina in the Charleston, larger Charleston area. So if that's somewhere that you can get to and you want a cat, please let me know so I can talk to you and we can get you a kitty cat. Yes. <laughs> do it i wish i was closer i wish june wasn't so long <laughs> mm -hmm. yep <laughs> i did ty but unfortunately um i cannot ship to the uk you'd have to come get it so <laughs> that okay but can you imagine the disney movie shenanigans that would be made out of that movie oh my god for real you know i did have somebody UK. i did have somebody from the wolves Den come and get a kitty cat um really yeah That's so did cool. Yeah, so did Drink Hat. I'll shout him out. Um, but he picked up one. Oh, uh, when I click away. Oh, there it goes. I think this is how you spell his Twitch name. 
That's awesome. Is this? I don't know if this is the right person. But anyways, their name is is kind of like that. So hopefully, Soda Drink Cat, that's that's them. I'm not actually 100% sure what their Twitch name is. Um, but it's a it's someone that's in the Wolves Den, and uh, and they've been here. They they're a viewer on the stream and stuff like that. And uh, he's cool, and he took Midnight. So Midnight. Oh, they're also very cute, cute ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, shall we get into our topic then? I think we should. How do we want to get started? Um, I think that we should talk about, again, like we kind of met, joked about it in the intro, but, but there should be some rules about making rules mm -hmm. that we've, that we've established or at least found that has really worked with us. Yeah. For uh, sure. And starting about like what those rules are and why those rules are important. And these aren't rules that your group will see. This isn't rules that you will actively be like advertising or saying, this is just stuff that you as an admin should follow and your mod team should follow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. and the first one is you need to have as few rules as possible and your rules need to be quick and concise yep people want to role play they don't want to spend a whole bunch of time reading rules and the truth is most role play groups it's the same rules over and over it's rare yep. that you really see something brand new in someone's group rules that you've never seen before most of the time it's all the stuff that you've already seen just repackaged in a way that helps you understand that particular role play right so with that in mind like if it takes me more than a few minutes to read through somebody's rules like to me that's a problem because it gives me the impression that this role play is full of new role players that don't already know what's up or like they're not really looking for experienced role players or maybe the mods are too heavy handed. Like, I don't know exactly why, but those are like some of the thoughts that come into my mind whenever I see like rules that are miles and miles long. Like, why are they miles and miles long? I can't really think of any good reason. So that's like, yeah, that's why I mean, we're saying keep your rules short. It definitely feels like when you enter a group that has a mile long rule list uh i come to the conclusion that there either is someone holding the mod team hostage or the mod team really likes power uh so that they can hold its players hostage <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and in which case neither of those things feel like a fun thing to join when you're looking for a rp group to start writing with because role play, I mean, it's it's a hobby at the end of the day, right? Like, it's not, it's pretty low stakes, right? So, like, I mean, what's what's the worst thing that can happen in a role play? Someone gets their feelings hurt, right? Like, it's it's just not, it's not like, um, it's not that important. I mean, it is because hobbies are important, but in the grand scheme of things is what I mean. So when you yeah. see lots and lots of rules, it's just kind of like, but why? Why are there so many? Like, why are they holding so tightly onto these reins? And in a practical sense, like in addition to that, the truth is, is that people read through your rules once when they first join and they never look at them again. And the thing is, is they probably forgotten 90% of those rules by the time they actually start role playing with you. So yeah. like, why did you put all that energy into having them read those rules when they're not going to remember most of them anyway? And they're just going to behave how they normally behave anyway <laughs> yep well and like also like you said before and you just said that, that the rules really boil down to don't be a dick yeah most of the time <laughs> don't be a dick and play and play this certain amount like that's mm -hmm. literally what rules break down to for the most part that's <laughs> what most rule, role play rules will end up saying in some way or another with more specifics of what's you know what has to do with that particular role play but yes. basically that's what they boil down to. And the thing is, is unless you're brand new to role play, unless you're brand new to this hobby, you're gonna do that anyway. Like you don't even be told, <laughs> you know. And yeah, and like when you start getting into the details of it, when you start being specific, like there's, and I don't even think that this is on our list. We, we've had lots of conversations and we've talked about on the stream, how one of our rules isn't don't be racist yeah we don't because have that that's rule. like implied yeah that's yeah. something that is obvious you shouldn't be racist so therefore it's not even a rule because it's just how you shouldn't be <laughs> i feel like it's covered in the like don't be a jerk don't be rule. A dick. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of people who write their rules to include every little thing. Don't be racist. Yeah. Don't be transphobic. Don't be this. Don't be that. Don't do this. And it's like, okay, when you start getting nitpicky, it, it means that you're I either A, you're leaving something out because you're guaranteed to be le- reading. Yeah, you can't like, cover everything in your rules. Out. That's just you not possible. You can't cover everything, especially if you're then adding to the rules. <laughs> if you're like, oh, uh, someone was really racist and therefore we need to clarify in our rules that people can't be racist. Like, actually, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. Just, your rules they do shouldn't not be have racist. to cover. Your rules do not have to cover a hundred percent of the possible situations that you're going to face as a mod and an admin team. Like even our laws don't do that. If our if our laws covered a hundred percent of everything, then we wouldn't even need a judicial system. We wouldn't need courts because it would just be like you know all you would, all the courts would have to do is determine guilt. There would be no sentencing, right? Like none of that would exist because the rules would just be everything was covered. But everything's not covered in any set of rules you know even when we're talking about big important things like how to make everyone in a country get along and live well right let alone a role play group so you don't need to cover every single little thing you know you can just say you can just say like at the bottom of your rules rules are enforced at the discretions of the mods and that's it that covers everything that you might have missed because you will miss stuff you will have situations where you realize you need to go talk to a player some situation has come up, some situation has happened, you got to go talk to this person, and it's not technically in your rules, right? But you still got to tell them to cut it out because it's for the betterment of the whole role play. That's going to happen no matter what you do. Yep, exactly. Uh, so again, as few rules as possible, as quick and concise as possible. Yep. yep. Uh, yeah. The other rule that we have that is an absolute rule to follow is that the mod team and admin team need to be held just as accountable to these rules as the people in the RP. Yes. People are so monkey see monkey do, right? Like if the admins break a rule and they don't see them getting a warning for it, then people are going to assume that that rule doesn't matter. And then if they don't value that rule already themselves, they're going to end up not following that rule, right? That's just that's just how those things go. So you know, if it's not, I'm not saying that all of your mods have to follow your rules all the time. That would be, we'll talk about later the specifics of rules, why that ends up being impossible. Basically, activity is why it ends up being impossible. However, <laughs> <laughs> um, if your mod does break a rule, you still have to go talk to them about yeah. whatever it is. You still have to activity check them if it's, you know, in, in regards to that. Like, you, you still have to do these things, even if the person is a mod. And it, I mean, like you said, it gets tricky and it gets complicated because there are issues here as far as like, oh, you have one mod who's not doing this thing. But if if the standard rule that we're talking about is bubble RPing or something like that, you need to be able to call out your mod team because people are going to monkey see, monkey do, but at the same time, they're also going to, <laughs> they're also going to feel the injustice if they see someone who has power getting away with something they're going to know the unfair hierarchy and really that's not something you want in an rp where everyone is trying to build a communal story you don't there is a hierarchy in there because there's like inherently there's someone who created the game and is running the game but you don't want that to be completely obvious in every aspect of the game yes Exactly. And if you are, and if you are willing and letting somebody completely break the rules, and holding somebody else's feet to the fire for that same exact thing, and one is a mod and one isn't, you're gonna, you're gonna hang yourself with your own rope. Like, it's just not good. Yep, <laughs> exactly. And the thing is, is like, I mean, and we've talked about these these kinds of things before. I don't believe in calling somebody out publicly, but like, what yeah. you really want your players to be able to see is if they notice the behavior that once it's noticed, you know, that, that you step in and that behavior stops, right? So yes. that the players realize, oh, they must have talked to this mod because the, the behavior stopped. It only went on for a couple weeks and then it was fine. You know, that's that's what you want to say. So when we say, like, call out the, the mod that's doing this, it doesn't necessarily mean publicly. I mean, if you have to, you have to. Sometimes that's what you have to do. But it can be privately, too. So long as the behavior doesn't go on, 
for months, then I think you're you're fine in that regard. But when somebody sees a rule breaking going on for months and months and months, they're going to be like, all righty then. So that rule doesn't matter. Guess I don't have to follow it either. You know? Or that rule does matter, but that person gets special treatment. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you see other people getting called out for it. Like, you yeah. know. Being like, yeah. So it's, it really is, you have to be okay with holding your mods accountable to these rules and your mods, you need to make communicate that your mods are going to be held accountable to these rules. Yep. Again, with the complexities of, of certain things having a little bit more leeway, but for the most part, these are the rules everyone needs to abide by them, especially those that involve talking to other people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And guess what? Landon just got her first baby bump. She is confirmed <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> look at that i just love how free and utterly utterly okay she is with walking around in her underwear well she's just <laughs> in her house so like it's kind of okay we'll get her no, dressed in a second but she's really hungry it's just my favorite thing that i'm like oh yeah no she's i love it because it's like oh yeah this is also how she proposed to her husband as well it's true straight up in her <laughs> underwear that is exactly what happened. She was in her underpants. Now, they were a little bit nicer underpants than this because she wasn't pregnant at the time. Now she's in kind of her <laughs> pregnancy clothes. Um, oh, apparently it bump, all but... falls apart when you're pregnant. You stop, you <laughs> stop wearing that sexy lingerie as soon as you get knocked up. That's what happens. In, in The Sims too, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Romance is dead. Romance is dead as soon as you get knocked up. Yep. <laughs> That's what she was teaching us, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, she's on leave now so she'll get to stay home for a little bit and we said so we have got to get malcolm a job um yeah, he is he's really like not contributing he, he's he not came, he came with the trust fund and then, and then we spent it all <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna see if this if the athletics job is there today if it's not then i'll just get him something because he's got to be working if she's on maternity leave <laughs> jane oh my god Jane says, what I stopped cleaning my toilet to come check in because I forgot we were playing Sims and heard Landon was pregnant with a baby bump. And I was like, what? There is no, yeah, didn't know? Is no child inside human Landon. There is a child inside Sims Landon. I mean, y'all didn't know, like, Landon's got a baby daddy and stuff. Like, do you yeah. remember her talking about that, like, a whole bunch oh, of times man. on stream? Oh, man, guys. <laughs> the baby daddy is real. He's, he has a trust fund. It's great. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> however taking applications so line on up i'll make a google form it'll be great <laughs> all right there's no athletics job today so i think i'm just going to get him the job in the business track i think that's fine he'll Can be okay he actively with that. search for another job no well you only get five choices a day i have like ways that i can get him more but um i have to put the put the career center in the neighborhood to to do that with with how i play basically um so we're not going to do that we'll we'll add some buildings kind of as we grow the generations but until landon has her first baby and we kind of go through start start that first generation it's just their house in the neighborhood so i'll explain that kind of as we get farther in he's going to take the they business are, job they are uh, ruling the neighborhood in other words a business exactly. job just like his dad it'll be great yeah it'll be fine so we'll do that all right so I guess All back right. on topic. <laughs> yeah, no, and that third and last rule, hard, fast rule that we have about rules is that consistency is key. You will shoot yourself in the foot if you say one thing on the top of your list and say a completely contracting idea on the bottom of your list. Mm -hmm. Contradicting, mm -hmm. not contraction. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's uh, true. And I've read role play groups that have rules like that, where it's clear that they never went back and read through them because the rules like don't make sense or they contradict each other or they're like just impossible to follow all of the rules at the same time, you know? So, um, so you've got to make sure that your, that your rules are consistent. And another thing is a lot of, for a lot of players, the rules are the very first thing they're going to read because that's going to give them an impression of how the mod team behaves and what kind of vibe the whole game has. So you want your rules to be that good first impression. Um, cause if they're not like, if you've got inconsistencies in there, then you potentially lost someone before they've even looked at your plot or anything about your game to see if they'd actually be interested 
you know, they kind of are like, well, I don't think I'll like the mod team, so bye, not even going to explore further. Well, I, I love that. That was so cute. Anyway, sorry. The <laughs> romance is not dead. <laughs> the romance is not dead. Also, there's a dog barking around. Are we adopting a dog? We can if she rolls the want for it. This one's got yellow eyes, so I think if you make friends with it, then you can end up being a werewolf. We're not worrying about that right now, but eventually That's will. That's so cool! <laughs> but she can, they can roll wants for, like, adopting animals. So if uh, they do that, then we might choose to adopt one. But unless they roll the want fair. for it, I'm not going to have them do it. That's fair. Um, no, what, and, uh, what was I saying? I forgot. No, it's, oh, consistency uh, of, with rules. Yeah, that consistency with rules. Also, it leaves, it leaves people, because there are, there's a certain type of role player who, who really wants to stick to the rules. They are rules oriented. And that's not even a role player. That's certain kind of people. It's cer certain people. Rules, certain people, that's how it. Mm -hmm. They just, they want to follow the rules. That's what gives, makes them feel safe and secure and all of that good stuff. Yep. And that's what makes them feel successful. And sometimes they will also do their best to, uh, to really hold your feet to the fire with the rules, uh, and the expectations that you are, that you are making. So if you have inconsistent rules, you are opening yourself up to people being able to sit there and be like, well, that's not what the rules say. That's, and, and arguing that. And it's not even necessarily saying that that's going to affect your game. What that does do, however, is affect uh, the emotions towards that player. It affects your job because you're gonna have a lot more conversations with your mod team about mm -hmm. stuff if all of a sudden there's someone who is playing at those weaknesses. Yep. Um, and you have to be ready for that. You know, yeah. if you're if you're going to be like that about your rules, you have to be ready and prepared for those conversations because people are going to be like, well, your rules say this or that, or I expected this based on reading your rules, or you need to add this to your rules or da 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 da. So like you have to make sure that you have everything set up the way that you really want it. Yep, it's. <sighs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a lot because like, that's the other thing too is that the last thing you will necessarily want to be doing in an rp when you're supposed to be having fun is arguing your rules mm -hmm. um and and if you have written them with a contradiction in them then there's a chance that you might not even really know what your rules read as versus what your rules say or what you are trying to say so what you're trying to convey versus what is actually being said you might not have a clear idea of that because of how other people are interpreted interpreting it and you are opening yourself up for a lot more work on mm -hmm. the long term. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of hard to know that until you've you know been a mod for a while and had a chance to yeah. really refine what rules you have so like this isn't something that you necessarily have to get perfect the first time but you know we made a lot of adjustments to how our rules were in the first couple of years that we were running role play games and as since then we've the rules have basically stayed the same but <laughs> for a while they were getting adjusted and shifted a lot because we weren't we weren't clearly communicating what we wanted to communicate and that was clear based on times that we had to pull people aside and be like hey what's up with this you know what's going on here what why are you behaving this way you know and they were able to point to things in the rules that didn't make sense to them and it's like oh well you know that's not that that's an excuse because you should still like you know behave and be a decent person but it helped us refine our rules. It helped us refine how we have those conversations, all of those wonderful things. It also, um, like it also a piece of advice with that, and I know Karen, you've given this advice many times, and I know there are certain admins who don't feel this way, but if you like a set of rules that you find along the way, copy them, mm -hmm. <laughs> take them, they're yeah. rules right like it's it doesn't matter if you're like oh actually this communicates exactly what i want in an rp it's just not the rp that i want or it's not a genre or it's an old rp that's dead or x y and z take it just take it yeah they're not rules rules aren't like i don't know to me like that's not even something creative i mean i guess you do have to get a little creative but it's not the same thing as like you know a plot of of a of a role play or or something like that so yeah rules Rules, I mean, I'm good with stealing anything because this is all free stuff, but rules especially, I don't understand why if people, if somebody stole somebody else's rules, the other person would get upset. Not that I've not seen it. I have seen it. 
I just don't get it. I'm like, you didn't put any creative energy into that. That's just your rules. Calm down. <laughs> but, you know, that's a whole other topic. Uh, but, but yes, fine. absolutely when it comes to rules. Absolutely when it comes to rules. Like, don't be afraid. Like, if you see a rule that's well written, it's like, this is exactly what I want. Like, just copy it. Like, it's fine. Yeah, or and if it's not the whole set of rules, if it's one particular rule, because you're like, hey, I never thought about having this rule of, I can't even think of a rule. Uh, let me. Just yeah, I don't know. Or maybe it's like, I never thought of doing my hiatus requirements this way. And I yeah. want to change my hiatus rule to match this other rule that I saw. Like, or something like that, you know? You can just take that. If you want to leave everything else, awesome. It's yep. okay. Yep. And anyone, in my opinion, anyone that has a problem with it, you you have a problem with the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, like that's not the place to put your energy. It's going to be okay. It's just it's there just are, rules. <laughs> there are many things that deserve your energy and this particular issue, not one of them. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shall we move on towards rules that we think are necessary? Yes. Okay. So before we do that, though, I want to just explain that we've kind of break it, broken this into three sections. We've got rules that we think are necessary. So this is like must have rules. Like you need to do this. If you don't do this, your rules aren't communicating the things they need to communicate. Right. Then we're going to put talk about rules we like. So stuff that we think is like, you know, you should probably have this, but I guess if you don't, you could still run a role play. Um, and then rules we hate. So we'll get to the spicy stuff at the end. But right now we want to talk about rules that we think like you have got to figure out how you want to do these certain things or I don't understand how you could run a role play. Spicy stuff. Spicy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I mean, yes, I think that obviously everyone's way that they're going to do these rules are very different. Um, but they are they are rules that foundationally we have had from the beginning and I couldn't see us ever getting rid of. Yep. yep. Uh, First and foremost, no out of character drama. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is the basically the be nice rule. <laughs> of course it happens. I mean, it's a group of people. Not everybody's going to get along. You know, you're not going to like everybody. Man, I mean, that would be a superpower. If you find it in somebody in the world that actually likes and gets along with everybody, let me know. I've never heard of this. Um. <laughs> I get along with absolutely everybody. And no. Everybody along why, with I, why are you lying? Why are you lying, Landon? <laughs> Girl, people think that I get along with everybody and then they're shocked to find out that, that is not true. Yes, actually, I am human and I do not you're, get along with you're everybody. Very, you're very kind to a lot of people. Well, that's true, but I'm, I, can, I, have the, I have the amazing ability to be nice to somebody even when I don't like them. Yeah, wow. I don't like that. <laughs> crazy. It's the Sagittarius of me. I'm a little too blunt for things like that. <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> Ridiculous. But no, I mean, and here's the thing. This is, I think, where people get run away with the, that idea of uh, concise and short rules. This, yeah. is, this is where people make mistakes because they will turn this rule of no out of character drama into rules of, no talking about behind each other's backs, no clicks, no this, no that, and like make it 10,000 rules. But at the end of the day, you can have a blanket rule that if an issue arises, you have at least the very least this rule as a tool in your arsenal to throw out if necessary. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, exactly. And people will, and so this is another thing with this rule is people think that they have to define what bad behavior is, but you don't. Because mm -hmm. even in the most like hardcore serious situations, like let's take um, a player was racist as an example. You might think, oh, that one's, you know, super clear. You would always want to, you know, ban someone that's being racist, da, 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 da. And most of the time that probably is what you're going to do. But <laughs> it's still an interpersonal issue because it's a small group. So you still want to talk to both the accuser and the accused to figure out what happened, to see if what they're being accused of is really true. I mean, we've talked about that on stream before. People going around and pointing fingers about, you know, you did this problematic thing, you did that problematic thing. And then when you ask for receipts, it's like, there is none. Like, it's where, where are they? Where is the racism? I can't, like, it literally just sounds like you two didn't like each other. I'm sorry, <laughs> you know, so, um, so I don't think you need to define every possible bad behavior someone might have. You just have to make it clear that, you know, if people are arguing and not getting along and can't figure out how to, you know, be in each other's presences, 
that you as a mod team will step in and help them handle it. That's really what you're trying to communicate because that's your job as a mod. If you've got two people that can't get along, that keep squabbling, can't figure it out, you know, then that is where you're going to step in. Ooh, Malcolm got a promotion. He's an executive oh. assistant level two now. Oh, goody. We love <laughs> we love a man who brings home the bacon. He did. I mean, he, he went there and immediately got a promotion. So good job, Malcolm. We it love to see that. Of, it must be because of his family name. It's fine. Probably. I mean, it's probably a little bit of nepotism there, but that's okay. That's okay. I mean, we don't hate him for it. Is dead, so he deserves a little bit of nepotism. <laughs> I mean, I guess if anyone does, right? Yeah, it must be the orphan. <laughs> <laughs> People felt sorry for orphan Malcolm, although he's an adult and is married and is, has a baby on the way. And so he's definitely going to be fine, but still. <laughs> I feel sorry for Orphan Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do, honey. <laughs> Thank you. No, and I think that this also is, uh, this, I think that this also deserves and opens up a conversation of how strict you want to be with your rules is also dependent on the, like, the mod team in general. So, like, for us, if someone did out of character drama that's not a reason to boot them ban them or even give them a warning we have had plenty of people who have started out of character drama uh and who haven't gotten warnings <laughs> or at i mean least it just depends time. right it depends but that's i mean and that that is depending on your style right that's mm -hmm. depending on your mod and admin style how how close to the fire do you want to hold those feet how much do you, are your word, are your rules law? Like all of that is up for debate. What this does is make sure that you have something in your arsenal to use should you need to. Mm -hmm. um, and it just gives you that extra tool. So. Yep, exactly. Because what you what you don't want to get into is if you've got somebody that is really focused on your rules and is kind of rules lawyering and things like that, is you don't want to end up having to waste a bunch of time talking to them about like, but it wasn't in your rules. I didn't understand because you didn't put it in your rules. Da 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 da. And it's like, you if somebody brings that up, like you have to address it with them. You have to explain it to them. You can't just leave them in the dark, not understanding. But like, that's such a huge freaking waste of your time and their time to spend time talking about rules lawyering instead of solving whatever the problem is that you're talking to them about in the first place you know well, and, and at the end of the day when it comes to these rules is that the people who are there is a hierarchy again it's that reference of there is that idea that there is an admin team and there is an admin person who gets to make the final decisions and if you don't like the rules you don't like how the rules are being followed out it's your responsibility to leave them yeah uh, but as a as a admin member and a mod team member then i would suggest at that point like these are you are building rules to be able to use in future events to make your life easier mm -hmm. uh and so what finding that balance of what does it look like to be consistent so that i am holding people to these rules but not tying myself up so that my entire job is holding people to these rules mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and doing things like no out of character drama and then getting to pull that rule out when it's a big thing and it's a big issue is a great way of doing it that we've found yeah and and necessary yeah because people basically understand what that means you know at the end of the day they get that that means when you're gonna be in a role play group you have to put on your get along pants and be nice to people and whatever capacity that means for you whatever strategies you want to use for that you know that that's a that's a whole other thing but like People basically understand what that rule means. Is like, don't be a freaking jerk. <laughs> yes, they. You would think they would understand. <laughs> no, well, they, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think. I mean, that goes like back to like. I don't think anyone's a jerk on purpose. You know. I, I agree. I, so. There, I, no. Yeah. Anyway, we need to move on to the next rule. So I want to talk about. I'm going to jump to the next one. So the next one is not safe for work content. So exactly what your rule entails here. Uh, we're not going to tell you what you have to allow and not allow in your role play. However, you have to define somewhat what is allowed and not allowed in your role play to set player expectations. So what I mean by that is you have to at a very basic level define like is 18 plus content okay in your role play? 
Yeah. To what extent is it okay? Is problematic content okay? How do you keep things separate between in character and out of character if problematic content is okay in your role play? You know, that's what we're talking about. So when we say that you need a not safe for work rule, what we're talking about is you have to set player expectations for what they might find inside your role play that could be potentially, you know, upsetting or shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I also think that this is an important rule to cover your bases legally here on the, in the States. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you, there, there has been in the past people who have been charged for allowing minors to engage in, in, or have been, have been RPing or writing with minors and talking with people they didn't realize were minors uh, in a 18 plus way. Mm -hmm. uh, and you need to be able to protect not only yourself from the possibility of that, but also your players. Yes. Uh, and the so best that... way to do that is to make it clear. So that if a minor yeah. does sneak in, then it's like, there was no, there was no tricking you. You snuck into the 18 plus club. We checked your badge. You had a really good falsy, but we tried. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and just saying that, that alone, sitting there and having must be 18 year older to engage in 18 year older content or we don't allow anyone who's under 18 or uh whatever whatever your dependent rule is for nsfw stuff you need to make that clear and that provides that safety net for all of your players and yourself because knowing like you can only do as much as ask someone's age and it's the internet, so they can either choose to be honest or choose to lie. But you are no longer held responsible because you have done your due diligence. Due diligence. Yep, it's, it's, the same, it's the same thing as when you go to a pornographic website and you have to put in your birthday, right? Exactly. So you just got to ask people what their age is. I don't agree with checking IDs because here's the thing with that. You yeah. do not have the structure and, and set up to um, be able to keep their personal identification information safe. So I'm not, just to make this super clear, I'm not advocating for checking IDs. I actually think that is super dangerous. What I'm, all I'm advocating for is like, you gotta define what people can expect in your role play. And if you are gonna have 18 plus material, you have to have some kind of age date, right? Whatever that is. Yeah, and also um, on that ID thing, I, I know that we're talking to mostly mod and admin people for this like episode, but I also wanna sit there and go, don't join an RP that requires your ID. Um, they can't protect your information. It could they be They can't protect your information. Also, you don't know if it's a scam. Never send someone your ID over the internet. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, por pornography websites run by huge companies don't ask for that. They just ask for you to put in your birthday. And it's because they don't have the, the time, energy, or structure to protect your information. And if a large porn pornography company doesn't, do you really think some random person who set up a role play for free in, as their hobby has that structure? No, they don't. Like, use your brain. <laughs> and a lot of power, whether you are aware of it or not, comes with somebody knowing your full name, the state you live in, and your birth date. Yep. Which it's like, that's a lot things. to put together. <laughs> Which, even if you cover up the driver license badge, even if you cover up the number, even if you cover up all these things, all three of those things is what people are searching for. Um, and it's, yeah, it just, don't do it. Don't it's do so it. It's so dangerous. It's so dangerous. It's not worth the risk. They can't keep you safe. You don't actually genuinely know who's on the other side of that. You just don't do it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, PSA. not worth it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, be clear about what your expectations are in NSFW stuff is. Um, I, I, I like the way that you did this uh, for triggering thing for triggering uh, topics. Mm. Um, where it so it wasn't very necessarily clear of, hey, like it was stated very clearly, we are okay with our players writing anything. And as a, as a member of this RP, you don't get to dictate what people write. But if there are certain aspects and certain things that you don't want to be approached about, write them here, basically. Yeah. That was attached to the rules semi because it is, again, that like statement of 
we are saying that our players can write anything. Yeah. So we try to make it like uh, available for people to do what they want, but also like if you state that I don't want to write, like a really common one example that I like to use is say you don't want to write miscarriages, right? Like, you know, um, uh, women and moms, uh, it's a common experience and it can be super, super triggering. So it's a yep. common one we would see because we would have a lot of adults in our role plays, right? So, you know, if you don't want to write anything with miscarriage, that doesn't mean that no one's allowed to write a miscarriage. If somebody else wants to, they can. But when you when you put that in there, what that means is that no one should be coming to you and saying, hey, Landon, I know you're triggered by miscarriage, but why don't you write this miscarriage story with me? Right. <laughs> then yeah. that's the level that we had um, so that people hopefully felt both free to write whatever they want and also free to, you know, protect themselves and be like, no, WTF, why would you message me that? I, I said that I wasn't interested already, you know? Yeah. But again, it was making it very clear that as a admin team, we were okay and supporting writers to write whatever, they, have the freedom to write whatever the fuck they wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, and that may include- Because that was our values. That matched what we what we wanted to bring, what we believe builds the most Absolutely. creativity. And if for your RP that doesn't fit, totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But we made that clear in our rules we made mm -hmm. that clear in our rules and then gave our and then gave our players a place to kind of talk about the things that they didn't want to be approached with mm -hmm. but we made it clear and that's that's basically what this rule is is state what your as clearly as possible what your stance is on nsfw content uh it should be two sentences <laughs> like yeah. because you, you want it to be as simple as possible for people to uh digest it and to cover your ass yep yep, yep. i like that one all right what's our next one that we want to talk about landon application acceptance okay uh and this is just basically giving information on how to apply and the expectation with applying and what comes with it um, no matter what kind of role play you're running even if it's like a quote-unquote appless role play there's still an app you know, you still got to yeah. tell the mods what the name of your character is, even if it's like totally appless, right? So there, no matter what kind of role play you're running, there's an application process. Yep. And what this really does is kind of protect you as a mod from not getting uh, a million questions about, have you read my app? When is my app going to be turned in? Uh, have you read my app yet? Have you read my app yet? Which happens still, whether you have rules or not. Um, <laughs> and sometimes justifiably so, because there are some times where the mods are like, oh, we'll check that out later. And then later never, and then later never happens. <laughs> <laughs> mods are humans too. <laughs> there have been a couple of times where it's been like, okay, dude, you turned this in five minutes ago. Let us breathe. <laughs> like we Four haven't even finished have reading it. it yet. <laughs> I'm glad you're excited, but whoa. <laughs> Uh, and this just gives it just gives your players information that they are that every single player is going to ask if they are new to your RP uh, mm -hmm. because they want information they want to know hey when can they what is what is necessary for me to apply and when am I going to know. Yep. And like, imagine this, imagine like you're job searching, right? And you go to the website of a company that you're really interested in. And you think like, wow, this would be something that would be like a really cool job for me. And you click on their careers link. You know, that's how it is. Like they'll have a careers link at the bottom. That's how most of these companies are. And you go there and the website is super confusing. You can't tell what listings they have, what they're looking for. You can't tell where you send your resume to. You can't, you know, like imagine that, like, even if I was really interested in that company before, if I go to their careers page and it doesn't tell me things like where to send the resume, it doesn't tell me what openings they have, it doesn't tell me, you know, anything about their HR policies, I'm going to be kind of like, mm, just kidding, maybe never mind. Maybe I'm actually not that interested in this company. Maybe it's cool and I'll just move on, you know? So when you don't have... not put together and complicated. <laughs> right. So like if you don't have anything in like your, your write-up, in your lore book, in your rules that explains your application process, that links people to the application, that makes it clear what qu normal questions people have, then yeah. like, I mean, that's going to turn people off. And you, you have to explain it because you don't want to be re-explaining that over and over and over and over. And Because like, there's no value there. People can read the rules and figure it out. And you mm. will. I mean, that's the reality is that you will read it over and over. You will have to say it over and over and over again if you don't include it. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that I think 
I've certainly learned from teaching and I'm sure you did too when you started oh, training. Yeah. It's like, oh, if you do not assume anyone will be able to come to their own inclusion, uh, conclusions about information or situations. No, uh, people need to be told. Be <laughs> by every single person. Uh, it doesn't matter. And even if you provide the information and provide it in several different ways, you're still going to be asked. But <laughs> you will certainly be asked less if you do provide that information up front. And, and you want and to give people an opportunity it. and you want to give people an opportunity to not feel like they have to ask. Like some people ask because that's how they clarify and they want to, but not everyone wants to ask. They want to yes. just read the rules and figure it out. So like making it be in your rules provides people that opportunity. Also very quickly, this is the moment where I realized Sin Landon is not in person Landon because I would never would never just play football in the middle of the night <laughs> while pregnant. Yeah, in, not in any, in out of the millions and millions and millions of alternate universes, Sims Landon is the only an alternate universe of my life in which I would do this. <laughs> I would just like to make that clear. Anyway. Well, she just, she just basically like wants to spend time with her husband and I bought them a very nice bed. So they get, they get well rested very quickly. Uh, fair. It just, football. <laughs> I understand. It could have been a baseball. Couldn't have been anything. <laughs> nope, it had to be football. Had to be football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes. Application. Uh, anything else on that? No, I really just I don't think it necessarily. I don't think that this episode is the time to talk about like my the any tips for applications or things like no. that. Um, but uh, but you a, have whatever a... your process is, you have to define it. Yeah, I think that they're, listen to the entire Enter Stage Window catalog. We give lots of advice and tips on applications throughout many different episodes. Yeah. Also, I'm sure that there is a uh, Wednesday show of that too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. There's definitely um, spare room episodes about spare applications. Room. Sorry. I, it left oh, no, my you're mind. good. Oh, no. It's not artistic license. It's the other one. <laughs> yep. No, it's, um. there's spare room episodes about applications for sure. So, yeah, I think that's good for that. Uh, character appearance. Yes. Um, it's again, it's, it's that as you, people are not going to think like you. So if you want an RP aesthetic to be a certain way, you need to communicate all of that. And your rules are the place to communicate that. So if you want anime characters or home drawn characters or face claims and, and doing real life actors or celebrities, this is where you put it. Hey, Brie. It's okay. Hi, Brie. It's okay. She's not popped her baby yet, so you yeah, haven't you missed really you. missed the important stuff. You've just missed us talking. <laughs> yeah, you missed the announcement that I was pregnant with a baby bump. Yeah, so see, she's got her baby bump right there. Um, also, uh, you missed that we, we've given some of the, the kittens away to Holmes, but I do still have baby cam if anybody wants to redeem it, and I'll show you all the rest of the, the babies that we still have. That's all you miss. That's all the important stuff. The rest of it is whatever. I mean, we're just talking about role play rules. It's whatever. <laughs> yeah, we're just talking. <laughs> That's all we're doing. Um, okay, yeah, character appearance. So I think this might be a little controversial. I think this is very necessary, but I, I have come across people that are like, I don't care and I don't want that to be necessary, but I believe that you get a group all rowing in the same direction if they all are imagining things in somewhat the same way. And I yeah. think enforcing a certain way of doing character appearances is a wonderful way to do this. So I don't necessarily advocate one way or the other. I prefer face claims personally, but I don't really care. So, um, so I don't really care what you choose, but I do think you need to choose something and tell everybody that their character appearance needs to be that, whether that's like a one paragraph description or whatever, all the other things that Landon listed basically. So um, I do think that, that you need to choose something for consistency. And it's not, and it's not because that it's going to, um, it's not because you can't role play without that, like you can, but I, I think it helps with everybody rowing in the same direction and wanting the story to all progress and all building a community together. I think it really helps with that community cohesion to have a consistent aesthetic. I also think it helps with genre. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are using anime face claims, you're going to have more people who are attracted to anime type characters and anime type storylines, Yep, which is not a bad thing, 
But that means that that's going to be more of an anime genre RP. Again, it's about consistency and the types yeah. of things that people might write. If you're going to have like a Game of Thrones the like dark, you know, dark fantasy thing, like there's a reason why we choose the even if we like look down to the face claims that we choose and suggest, it's because it's that consistency. We want to even keep it within that. Now we won't yeah. go so far and say that you can only use face claims from this, that, and the other thing. Um, but I think that naturally there is a consistency that comes with certain genres yep. and yep. making sure you have that cohesion continues. Uh, yep. And I'm also just don't like anime. <laughs> Although super excited, Although, excited for the Sailor Moon movie that's coming out next week, um, but other Landon, than that, you say that, but we have we're gonna have monthly media episodes, and if you don't think I'm gonna put some anime in there, you're crazy. We're gonna have you watch some anime, so get ready. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it doesn't mean I'm gonna enjoy it. I think you'll be surprised. I think you'll be surprised. Anyway, I'm, that being I'll said, well, anyway. that's okay. <laughs> We'll see. Okay, that being said, like, it, yes, because, you know, we talked before about how we are with not safe for work content. Well, it makes a lot of sense for us then use real life face claims, typically from sexy soap opera is shows because that's the kind of stuff we write no matter what actual genre. We're writing yes. a lot of sexy soap operas. I mean, that's how we do. So, of course, we have, like, face claims from character from uh, actors that have been featured in CW shows or HBO shows or Showtime shows. You know, that's what we tend to have in our role plays, right? Because that's what we tend to write. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, my God! Thank you so much for the raid! Thank oh, you so much! Raid. 12 people! 12 people! Holy crap! Hello! Did you, did you rival, somebody do a exclamation so that'll do a shout out and then your new rival um and shout him out if y'all aren't following rival y'all need to be um rival tell me did you in fact get over it he was playing get over it before i was watching his stream before before we started streaming <laughs> <laughs> so did you in fact get over it you'll have to let us know and uh and while he's letting us know i think let's move to the next um, necessary rule number of characters so what do we think about about that Landon like what is what does that mean when we say you need to define number of characters so I think like personally for me I would have actually had this on the like list um but I think what the rule itself means is that it sh it shows when you can get new characters how often you can get new characters and how many characters you can have yep this is another one of those things that kind of like um, application acceptance I feel like it doesn't matter what you define but you need to define something because people are gonna ask they're gonna be like can I have more than one character they're gonna be like you know how often can I create new characters what happens if I don't like my character anymore and I want to drop it right like it doesn't matter what exactly you choose I don't think but you have to choose something so that people that don't necessarily want to ask you every little question have a basic idea of what's going on. Now, will this stop them from actually asking? No, they're still going to ask because they want to talk it out with you because they're new and they're nervous, whatever. But again, not everyone wants to ask the question. So you just you want to define something about that in your rules, how you do that. Um, Rival, hey, it's valid. Sometimes life is about giving up and just playing cards. So I hear you. It's OK. It's okay. <laughs> we understand. Mm -hmm, absolutely. <laughs> but that's, no, I, that's again, why it's on here. It's just making your life easier. It's just, mm -hmm. instead of having to a answer the same question 20,000 times, you just write it out once and then you can go, go read the rules. <laughs> or you can just copy and paste. Like, I don't even, like if somebody asks me a question that's in the rules, like I'm gonna be real real with y'all. I don't tell them to go read the rules because like they probably already did and they just didn't understand it and they asked their question to me wrong or maybe they didn't and they're lazy like whatever i don't really care but you know what you can do you can still be nice to them and explain it but you don't have to retype it all out you can copy and paste it's again being nice to people oh my god <laughs> amazing i know landon really why are you so <laughs> oh. all right have fun at the shop rival um so yeah, that's that's what we got for that. Yes, yes. Uh, and then your warning system. 
uh what and i don't know if this was did you when you put this on the list was this like the warning system as far as breaking the rules or was this a warning system as far as activity it's really more about like breaking the rules so okay. like if you don't follow the rules what can you expect to happen yes right so um that's that's what is important to define and this is really critical because this will give a pe give people an idea of like what they can actually expect as far as rule enforcement goes so and 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 they want to know right because they want to know if you're like crazy strict or if you're you're not because the people that are more rule rule followers probably are looking for something that's a little bit stricter and the people that are like you know dirty dirty anarchists like myself um just want to uh not never read the rules and do the do your own thing and so you know they want to know that you're pretty lenient <laughs> Um, we used a three strike system basically, and no one ever got to three strikes. That's that's like how we we did. <laughs> um, yeah, and this is another sure. one of those where like I what exactly you do is a whole other conversation. But for the purposes of today, what we really want to impress upon you is that you need to define what you're doing, whatever that is. Yeah, and I mean, and if that's we don't agree with this, I can say we the royal we because I know you don't agree with this. Uh, <laughs> A rule, a rule example of this could be that break any of these rules and you'll automatically get banned. Oh, like God, that, I would never do that, be, but yeah. We would never do that. However, <laughs> we know people who would. Uh, well, that's not and, true. Okay, there is one time that I do that because I say if you lie about your age, you are kicked, no questions asked. Yeah, but I, but I actually more like, do do that for that one situation. But I meant more like engaging in any of the rules. If you break any of these rules. Yeah, I would never do that. Uh you're gonna get banned you're gonna uh, get yeah no man um, um that sounds like some police crap and uh fuck the police so no i would never do that um, but you can if you want to if that's know. how you want to run your game <laughs> we know some people who would um, i do yeah <laughs> and it's and there's nothing wrong with that if that's how you choose to run your game mm -hmm. you don't you get to run the, your game however you want to which means if we don't agree with it it's none of our fucking business we don't i have just won't join <laughs> that's all there is i to just that. won't play that way or i'll purposely play the game of how fast can i get kicked out oh my god <laughs> landon do not speed run getting kicked from people's areas that's so rude. But i like making enemies no you don't um, you're such a liar y'all she talks this big game on here but landon's actually really nice in real life i'm not i'm terrible <laughs> um it's it's all it's all it's the taurus rising it's fine we're gonna go through my entire birth chart as an excuse today that's what's gonna happen sure i mean sometimes it's that it, you just gotta have that energy i just gotta do that um but no i think that having that warning system that clear concise what happens if you break the rules is it, it means that also things are consistent so if a mod member breaks the rules versus if somebody else breaks the rules, the punishment is consist consistent because the consequent, not punishment, the consequence is consistent because the consequence yes. is spelled out and already mm -hmm. decided um, and therefore can be, can be navigated easily and consistently. If it's not there, then people are going to be upset because they're going to be surprised the harshness of it or they're not going to learn their lesson and continue to do it until it escalates to a point where they will then be upset because they right the harshness so so real quick before i comment on that malcolm got promoted again what a what a good choice you made landon what a good <laughs> husband good. once we got him working in the business world oh he's such a good boy <laughs> well the problem is now is he needs a creativity skill point and he doesn't seem to roll wants for building his creativity skill so we'll see how that goes oh he um, too is good side that's good to know yeah <laughs> he got promoted again so that's good nice. um we'll yeah so so the thing is is that when somebody joins your role play you don't know what baggage they're coming in with you don't know what other previous experiences they've had with other role plays you don't know what other previous experiences they've had with friend groups like you don't know any of that stuff so you don't know what kind of expectations they might have and that's why defining your warning system and your consequences system is so important because they're people if you don't define that stuff they're going to make assumptions based on what they experienced previously and that may have nothing to do with how you run your game right yeah and it, it and it doesn't like that's the other thing too is and you do the same thing you're going to assume 
people are going to follow and understand your rules because of your previous experiences. Mm -hmm. And, and that's just, it's again, that assuming makes an ass out of me and you, like you just, just, if you're going to make rules that you expect people to follow, just write it all out. You got to tell them about it. People aren't psychic. <laughs> yeah, because also if you don't tell them that this is not, that this is a problem or this is what happens when you break the rules, then it's not, it's almost not their fault because mm -hmm. they didn't know the expectations placed upon them. Mm -hmm. it's like your, a, imagine it in an actual like imagine this in an actual high stakes situation you're working at your job right you're, you're working at your job whatever whatever um you're doing what you think is the best work that that you that you can do right and then all of a sudden your boss pulls you into a room and says hey we need to do a performance evaluation you've been screwing this thing up there's an athletics job fabulous um so <laughs> pulls you now into he's a room and says, the job that he's been promoted at three times to go start yep. a career in athletics. Okay. It's his dream it's, job. That's what he wanted pregnant, with his pregnant wife, you know, do any moment. It's fine. Malcolm. It's okay. That's what he wanted. So that's no, what I, we're going to do. <laughs> no, I understand. I'm just also want to yell at my fictional husband. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So your boss pulls you into a room and they say to you, Hey, you've been screwing this thing up for the past six months. How is that going to make you feel? That's going to make you feel like, well, gosh, I wish you would have freaking told me six months ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, it's the same. It's not high stakes in a role play group, but it's the same thing. If you pull someone aside and be like, hey, you've been screwing this up for a while and we're going to now ban you. Punish it's like, you wait a second. That. Where was the warning? Where was the, first, the initial conversation? Where were the strikes? You know, yeah. when you jump straight to ban over something that you, that's the first time you've brought it, brought it up, like, that's, that's not going to make them feel confident in your game. That's not going to make them be interested anymore, you know, it, like, they're, it, you've lost them. Yeah, it also makes you not a great leader. Like, I'll no. just go out and say that, that that does not make you a good boss. It doesn't make you a good leader. It doesn't no. build a good community. If you are it's just going to scare people. Yeah. And it, right. If you think so. that person is not going to go around and screenshot those DMs and show it to everybody else, you're crazy. That's exactly what they're going to do. Yeah. So at the end of the day, just write what your warning system is, write how your system works. And your system can work any way it wants to. That's not going to be judged. Other people get to read that and either accept it or not. You get to design your system any way that you want, but at least communicate it to people. End of the day. That's yes. those are the ones that I. Uh oh, I'm so sorry, guys. Those are the rules. Okay, there oh. we go. Sorry, my computer's sort of freezing for a second, but it's fine. <laughs> uh oh. It's okay though. We're good now. It, apparently, it's, Sims decided to slow things down because y'all were having sexy time. Oh well. <laughs> it's just so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> all right we good now awesome. oh yeah it's all good now um so yeah you just you just have to you have to define it so that people know what to expect yep. that's really what it's about so that they can make the right choice of if they want to join your game or not exactly uh do we want to move to rules that we like that we like to include in our in our groups yeah let's talk about some rules that we like um landon what's a rule that you like um I really do like uh, keeping character interactions fair. Yes. Um, and, and I think that this explains and requires some nuance on explaining bubble RPing and all of that. Um, yeah. But basically what this rule is trying to do is prevent clicks. It's trying to, we are a community. RPs are building communities, which means that everyone needs to play equal part in the community and should try to strive to get to know everybody and play with everybody. Um, and I'm not saying that every single time you write a starter, you owe, or even make a character, you owe everybody a response or a starter or have to get to know everybody's character. Like, that's not possible. But you should be willing and open to the idea of playing with every person's character or, or not just being like, oh, Karen, I only like Karen, and so I'm only going to play with Karen. Mm -hmm. Now, not to say that you can actually 100% prevent that. I don't believe that you can. Oh. You know, you're going to have people that, you know, people have preferences, and that's just how that is. 
but you can at least foster a community that um, is less clicky than it has to be, <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> and realistically, like, even you as a player, you're going to have plots that you are more excited about than others. Mm -hmm. And there's no fault in that. But trying to then sit there and say, but they're equally as important. So when it's not even how we run our bubble is that our bubble RPing is basically if two weeks go by without a response, you're going to get a strike. Yeah. For one, like one person doesn't it, get a response, but other people do. Yeah. For two weeks in a row. It's, or is it three weeks? It's, it no, it's like, it ends up being three weeks because it's basically like, We'll, we'll warn you for two weeks, and then on the third week, that's when you actually get, like, the, the warning or whatever. Um, so it ends up being, in effect, two weeks and some change. Yes. So it's it really is like this, hey, you need to remember that these things are not just the only things that you have going on. That you, you should participate with other players. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's okay if you like or are very passionate about one plot line more than the other, that's or one character more than the other, or X, Y, and Z, that's okay. But we're not gonna just click off. We're not just gonna say, hey, these are my two people and these are the only two people I'm gonna write with, because then you should just write in a three way. Yeah. <laughs> like why are you in a group? Like you should just yeah. be writing with those people. Um, and also recognizing that not everyone's going to get along in an RP and that's okay too, but it at least what it does is it, it writes the rule and passes that message that we are a community and we want you to strive to write with everyone at least once. Yep. Yep. Even if that goal is not achieved, which it won't be, you at least want yeah. to be doing the best that you can to foster as much community as possible. Absolutely. Like, and it just, it is that, and and it's it's one of those rules that like I like how we came up with enforcing it because I think if you don't find a middle ground of enforcing with like bubble like the bubble RPing, mm -hmm. it can get really dicey really quickly. Yeah, like I hate so, when I see rules that like you have to role play with everyone. Like, no, I yeah. do not. If I like everyone in the RP except for one person that really annoys me, I'm not going to role play with that person. I'm sorry, but my time is precious. I'm not going to yeah. waste my time on somebody that like high key annoys me. Sorry. No, yeah, and that's and that's totally fine or even like I don't have the time to RP with every single person. If there's yeah. 20 people in this RP, I don't have time to do 20 threads. Yeah. You might <laughs> you just might not. Maybe especially if i want to push a store a narrative story and a yeah, lot of yeah. those threads might not actually contribute to that narrative yeah so uh, it might be in a situation where you have time to role play with like maybe three people right and that's all the time that you have so you do your best to spread that out you know and and vary it up but um but at the end of the day you still can't play with everybody exactly yeah exactly Bruce. Um, I think in, in regards to keeping uh, character interactions fair, in addition to bubble role playing, I like when I see a role play that explicitly says like, no God modding, no power playing, you know, no of those, those common role play faux pas, right? Um, so you don't have to like be, you don't have to like spend a lot of time on this rule because most people know what God modding and power playing and these things are. So I just yeah. like to see, I, but I like to see that in the rules. Like, because it lets me know that the mod team understands that this role play is collaborative. We're not in competition with each other. So if you do God mod, if you metagame, if you do things like that, and you know someone brings it to the mod team, that they're going to handle it, right? And yeah. like this, it, this is a rule that we like, because it, it's not necessary. Like you don't have to do this because you're covering it in your no out of character drama, right? In the be nice. But to me, it helps me understand that, like, the mod team values the role play being fair, too. Exactly. And if, if something happened where I felt like even if it was an accident, it means that you could go to the mod team to discuss it and to yeah, navigate you need to. through the situation. Uh, and that the mod team is willing to navigate through the situation, because sometimes things, situations like this are hard to navigate through. Um, so that the mod team is really in full support of, of doing that even if it was an accident, like even if it wasn't purposeful on the person who god mod or metagame part. Yeah, exactly. Like they'll help um, you out with that situation. Yeah, it leaves, it, it again is building that community in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
another another great rule is uh activity requirements yes uh, as someone who really often uh needs someone the possibility of being yelled at in order to be inspired to do anything um, <laughs> activity requirements are great for me because it and I, I mean that in a jokey way but also in a completely serious way that it's like oh sometimes I get in my own head my own anxiety uh the week has gotten away from me and it's like oh man I need to be able to get these replies in and mm -hmm. and I need to just do it I need it like forces me to just do it especially if I'm struggling with writing or a lot's going on in my life and that's really nice like it keeps me honest and keeps me as like part of the group and it also makes sure that that means not everybody is waiting forever on me mm-hmm yep yeah I think so um activity requirements this is under the rules we like because I do know that some role plays don't necessarily have activity requirements and if you're running a group with a very small very very small number of people like even smaller than I typically do them um then maybe you don't need them or if you're running a group that's like you know hundreds of people and you're not gonna you're just not gonna be able to keep up with it because you've got a massive group like I could see that but I don't know how you can run a the group a group the style that we tend to run them where it's like you know 20 ish people and it's a lot of uh story and things like that yeah. i don't know how you can run that and not have activity requirements like people just won't will stop posting if you don't remind them i feel like <laughs> well, yeah, like those activity those activity requirements too can be completely unique to how you choose to run your role play Yes. So your activity requirements could be every day. Your activity requirements could be every week. It could be once a month. Um, it could be anywhere in between any of those. Mm -hmm. And that's, that is something that is up to you. But I do agree that having that is something that really does help with making sure an RP stays interesting. Mm -hmm. um, because we've all been in there without we've all been in that situation where it's like oh if i don't have to post this today then i might do something else and then one day turns into two days turns into three days turns into a week turns into a month all of a sudden the rp is dead yep <laughs> yep people are busy right and it's easy yeah. to get caught up in like you know your work or your school or you know some other hobby or whatever so i just think the activity requirements are really helpful to to get people through those times where they're distracted with other things right, right? and and that way they're constantly and regularly reminded so that they can make the right decision of whether they need to be staying in the role play or not because this is what happens when you don't have activity requirements people will just sit and stay in the role play and refuse to leave even though they're not interested, even though they don't care, even though they don't want to be there, they'll just chill out in the role play, right? Because no one's going to do anything about it. Yup. It's, I mean, yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> said beautifully. Yeah, and nothing kills a role play faster than a bunch of dead accounts sitting there that not actually role playing. Yeah, or, or waiting on a bunch of people. Like, that's the other thing too, is it's really discouraging if you're suddenly like, oh, I have... I have no threads this week because everybody else didn't write back. Yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, kind of sad. Then it's like, okay, well, is this worth my time anymore? You know, when that yeah, happens, that's what you start thinking. As someone who has been on both ends of that, it sucks to be on both mm -hmm. ends of that. But it's also something that is a slippery slope. And if you as a mod, your responsibility is keeping this RP alive, then really activity checks are a useful tool and then being able to have it all spelled out so it never changes through the course of the rp that people know what kind of commitment they are making because if they're only available to do once a week or once a month um they can mm -hmm. but at the same time like oh if they really want once a day and they go into a once a week activity then that's their own fault. <laughs> yeah. And it's like they bit off more than they could chew because you told them, you warned them. Yeah. Or they didn't bite off enough that they're expecting other people to do once a day or really fast replies. And it's like, no, dude, that's not how this RP is built. <laughs> yeah. I had a question one time in the cafe where somebody was like, you know, how do you feel about somebody that's just meeting the bare minimum activity requirements? Um, you know, what do you do about that person? I'm like, nothing. If you're unhappy with that, then you didn't set the right minimum for your group. Yeah, then they're meeting the they're meeting the requirements. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. 
Yeah, so make sure your activity requirements actually match what you expect people to do. Because somebody's going to do the bare minimum. If you're not going to be happy with that, then you need to rethink if that's really your requirement. Also, give yourself room. Mm -hmm. I think that that's something that we struggle with, too, is that, like, summer's coming up. Life's about to not be busy for a lot of people who are going to start RPing. Which means, like, all of a sudden, once every three-day activity sounds totally doable. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden school starts or work ramps up again in the fall. Or yeah, and then it's not doable. Thing, and it's suddenly not doable. You can't just change the RP expectations of your group. Yeah. Um, because like that doesn't work because again, people are agreeing to something when they sign up to so for something and you can't then just like be like, just kidding. Yeah. Going yeah. down to make it longer is a little bit more okay and plausible, but like going from like one week to three days, people- Oh God, that would never work. God. People would just bail. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's a great way to kill an RP. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is the activity requirements. Uh, and kind of on the same scale of that is the, is hiatus requirements. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that something that's really, really great at having this in the rules and having this be clear is A, that you are 100% okay with hiatuses. Yeah. Um, I think communicating that right off the bat will be awesome. And then just showing like what is required in that is is something that means that it's easy access, that that if someone needs an, if someone needs a hiatus, it doesn't mean that they have to jump through a million hoops. Yes. Which is awesome. Like yeah, communicating for sure. that when they don't need a hiatus, making sure that that's clear from the beginning is something I think is really, really important. Absolutely. Um, because people want to be able to take a hiatus. So you need to communicate like how that's supposed to happen, right? Um, and what exactly your hiatus requirements are, kind of like the activity requirements, like it doesn't matter necessarily. It really depends on what kind of role play you're running and who you want to attract. Um, but you need to have something because you don't want people to think that once they've joined that they can't take a hiatus if they need one, right? So I guess this is one of those things that like, depending on the audience that, you're, that you've cultivated, um, it's like, it's not a must have in your rules. But when I don't see it, it makes me nervous. So I really like to see it. <laughs> it's, it's tough. Yeah, <laughs> it's tough. Just feel free with hiatuses and make that information accessible and easy. Because when people need hiatuses, sometimes it's really hard to ask for one. Sometimes um, it is. And so I would advocate 10 times out of 10 to make it really simple to ask for one. Uh, as a like mod team, not make it like a huge thing, a huge explanation, just asking for one and having a date of returning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like, uh, how often are people allowed to take hiatuses? I think that's good yeah. to define. And, um, and, then and also uh, yeah, clear that it's okay to come back if you need to take longer of a break. Mm -hmm. That, yeah. oh, hey, one week, we give hiatuses for one week and one week's not going to be enough because you're really going through something. Yeah, that's okay. Hey, Landon's um, really going through something right now. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my God. Okay, y'all. Uh, Hopefully we have a boy because we, so we have a tiny. We have a name in the queue. We have a name in the queue for um for if Landon has a boy, but if she has a girl, we don't have any names in the queue. So um we'll have to see. Let's let's find out. Ooh. Oh, the dresser's in the way, dang it. Dang it. And the baby just like pop out of her stomach alien style. Oh, that's cute. That's really cute. Fashion. Oh. oh, and it's a blonde baby. It's a blonde. I mean, daddy and mommy are blonde, so. Yeah, so it was, okay, it is a baby boy. Okay, oh, Tormund. Wait. So, okay, so so Tormund is the name of the baby uh, chosen by Jane. Love it, Jane. <laughs> Malcolm, Landon, and Tormund. Oh, that poor family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so that. glad Malcolm is so happy. That's so nice. 
Um, but yeah, no, I think, uh, and then sitting there and being like, hey, it's okay if you take longer than a week, uh, you can always reapply. Yeah. Yeah, whatever it is that you want people to do. Um, you know, I, I like to see that defined because it lets me know that like life is okay. Hey, cucumber cow. Did you see, did you see Landon have her baby? We have a little baby boy named Tormund. <laughs> so we need some more names in the queue because I'm definitely, we're definitely going to try to have another baby for Landon, I think. Hopefully she'll roll a want for that and we'll have her another baby. So we don't have just Tormund. So we need some more names for what y'all want. It's a channel point we're doing. Aaron a spare. I mean, this is mm -hmm. the next challenge. So. Exactly. We need an Aaron a spare. That's right. At least. <laughs> At least. <laughs> All right, so I think that that probably brings us to our last category, right? Rules we hate. It does. It's spicy time, y'all. It's spicy, spicy time. Okay. Uh, Landon, do you want me to start or do you want to start? You, you start because I know okay. how passionately you feel about this one. Okay, so there is a particular rule that I hate with a passion. And I'm very sorry because I know some of my friends actually do this. And I don't hate you guys. I just think you're wrong. Um, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm wrong sometimes, too. Um, it's not a big yep. deal. Okay, so here it is. Here's the T, the thing I hate. Passwords and rules. It's the worst. It's stupid. Here I am here to tell you why. This is the freaking dumbest thing. Okay, so what you think you're doing with a password and a rule, I know this because I've asked people like that have these, like what, why, what the hell. You think that you're like guaranteeing yourself somehow <laughs> that people will like, oh, it's like they signed off. It's like they signed off on your rules and they're going to remember them. But let me tell y'all the truth. Five minutes after people read your rules, they forgot all of your rules. Okay? They don't care. They don't remember. So this is the thing that your rules really need to do is be there as a tool when you need to talk to players. Okay? And making people hunt for a password doesn't mean that they're more likely to read or follow your rules. It just it just doesn't what makes people more likely to read and follow your rules is if you make them consistent and simple and easy to read okay not having miles and miles of rules is what makes people read your rules if you have passwords in your rules all that makes people do is hunt for the password it does not make them actually absorb or understand your rules any better or follow them better in the future like it literally it does nothing but make you believe you did something like it's just it's all false okay that's just not how brains work or how behavior works it's just not um okay little rant over landon if you had any comments about passwords and rules go yeah, for it. you know what i do <laughs> uh you know what i do when i uh when i see that there's a password for the rules what do you do I hit control and then mm -hmm. i hit f and then I find the password, and mm -hmm. then I don't read any of the rules. Uh huh. <laughs> well, I'm gonna give you all the tea, and like this is, and this is it's bad. The like, don't exact opposite of what yeah. you wanted it be for me because, to do because it just because makes I'm, me mad. It makes me I'm mad, and it's like, of it's the like fact why? That, yeah, I'm resentful of the fact that I am being told to go on a scavenger hunt for something that I don't want to read anyway. Yeah, because this um, is the thing. I'm reading the rules to try to figure out if, like, you have the tone and everything that I want, okay, in a role play. I'm not reading the rules because I'm going to follow your rules. Like, that's the truth. I'm going to behave like me. And I don't, th and in role play, I'm sorry, it's just too low stakes. I'm going to behave like how I want to behave. The reason I'm reading your rules is to see if my behavior lines up with your rules, okay? That's what I'm doing. I'm not actually going to modify my behavior. I'm just not going to join your role play if, our, if my behavior doesn't match. Okay, that's what, that's, that's what's happening there. I, yeah, I just. I think most role players are the challenge. same. <laughs> like, why would you join a role play where you thought the rules were making you not behave like you? It's just a role play. You can find another. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, for me, I just sit there and I go, it's at the point I'm like, <laughs> I succeeded in the thing. I have learned no new information, but I also know that the rules didn't say anything interesting anyway <laughs> that's my thought <laughs> and that's not the that's not what you want you that's not what you want someone who is joining to walk mm -hmm. away from mm -hmm. like but th like that's my thought when i see a password i'm like <laughs> must beat the system learn nothing well it's true right it's true because like 
when it comes to when it comes to like boring stuff that you're making people read like because the rules they're not interesting they're not your lore they're not your plot they're not any of the cool stuff right so people really don't want to read it they're just they're reading it for their own purposes or you know because you asked them to right and it's the same thing as, as anything else like you know at work when you get assigned like you know discrimination and harassment training like you already know all the information in there and yet you're having to sit through the training like it's annoying and boring are you really paying attention like no you're not because you've heard this 60 gajillion times right so it's the same thing with reading rules it's the same thing so that's why passwords have give me such a negative reaction so when you have those types of trainings right when you have like discrimination harassment training compliance training safety training things where you have to do the training because the regulations say you have to but people have already heard it a gajillion times so they're really bored you have to give them the why and the with him the what's in it for me right and that is why we say your rules need to be short and consistent and all of those things we talked about at the beginning because that helps you communicate the what's in it for me the with him for the player of reading your rules and the why your rules are important right so instead of putting a password in the rules if you can't get people to follow your rules don't do that don't do a password instead figure out why people are joining your role play that don't follow your rules there's there's a breakdown there people aren't understanding them at some level or you've got something in there that's not possible to follow because of other setups and structures in your role play or whatever right that's what you need to do password will not solve your problem it won't. <laughs> it's well said it's it's so it's just it's also like yeah it's treating adults like children too. it is i'm sorry and i and to my friends that use passwords and rules, I get why you do it. Um, if I haven't convinced you and I've just pissed you off, I apologize. I, I promise, like, I will I never tell you this one-on-one -on -one because it's your role play. You do what the hell you want. But that's how I feel. No, I I, I, I understand the logic behind it. It just is. A, it's, but it doesn't work. It's It just doesn't work. Yeah. Like, logic doesn't actually pan out the way that we no. do. Yeah. So, all right. Shall we move to the next one? Yeah, you can take the next one because I, I feel like I get a good I get a good rant. That was pretty good. Oh, no, you're good. I I mean I hate this one. This one drives me crazy. Uh RP lock. Yes. I okay, so also known as time lock or anything like that. This is where a person has to write and focus on one thread at a time in order to keep the timeline of the RP a little bit clearer um but it's so limiting and so incredibly complicated and just doesn't build community in my opinion like because what if you accidentally I, choose the slow player also, yeah you accidentally choose the slow player also our peers are notoriously terrible at ending rp threads uh-huh i have there have been threads that i'm like started out as a 10 out of like one of 10, 10 being like the best thing in the world and slowly start to dwindle down to a three because we didn't end it at the right time. And you just and kept going and going and going. <laughs> because we're everyone, and I've ranted about this before, but everyone in this hobby is terrible at ending things. Mm -hmm. um, and it just is so frustrating because then all of a sudden you're in this RP lock where you're forced to be in this thread both of you are socially awkward. Neither of you wants to end it in order to like not insult the other person. But at the same time, you hate what you're writing. Way to kill a muse. Now, some, to be fair, some role plays do get around this by having RP lock, but also being like, oh, well, you can have two threads at once or three threads at once. But no. like, I don't think that that fixes it. At least it doesn't for me. Like, I know how much time I have. Let me decide how many threads I can do. And I, I don't know, maybe this is the problem and maybe this is the big difference. I don't care about the timeline. If I screw up my timeline, I will work that out. I don't need a mechanic to work it out for me. No one is paying enough attention to care. No, they're really not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you have a character death or something that's like really big that then doesn't work, like that's a thing. But like no one genuinely is paying enough attention to no give a shit. Yeah, most people aren't reading other role plays. I mean, they might be, 
if it's like particularly compelling or they're but your best even, friend or whatever but generally but they're not like oh but this is happening before this thing and this thing and that thing is happening after that thing like no one is putting all of that together they have some idea of when it's happening but they don't need to know this like this is happening on june 12th 2037 at 6 p.m and this mm -hmm. other threat is happening at june 12th 2037 at 7 23 p.m like yeah. it, it doesn't need to be that big of a deal um it's really really hard like it's something that i am i i also what it does is it's it um stifles my control of being able to narrate the story I want to tell. And that's if the I other thing. Role players are control freaks. Or three <laughs> threads at a time. Yep. And that's the other thing. Like, role players are control freaks. Like, all of us are, right? Yeah. To some degree, at least. And whenever... <laughs> yeah. So whenever you take the control away from the player um, and give it to the just solely the mod group or the mechanics of the role play... That's so annoying. It's the same thing as like, like a good dungeon master in Dungeons and Dragons says, I know you failed that role, but that makes no sense for your character. So you didn't actually fail that role, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like, you want that. You want that. Yeah, exactly. And I just, <sighs> some stories get told faster than other. And you know what it would actually make me do? And Brie made a comment in the, in the chat of what it would make her do. But for me, it, what it would make me do is it, it wouldn't make me write with other people. It would make me write with the two or three people that I was going to ship with. Yeah. Or like it would, make, <laughs> it would make it bare boned down to the what is an important narration plot line that I know will go quickly. It won't op me up, open me up to new writers. It won't open me up to new stories. The improvisational, because of just how I write in general, the improvisational of everything would be gone because I wouldn't have to adapt to other people's writing because I would be so focused on writing with one or two people that I'd have stuff plotted out. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. it, it just it's it's so frustrating and i think it stifles creativity for for something that i'm not sure gains anything yeah i I'm think what sure you gain you gain a sense of control you gain a sense of like it's harder for people to kind of like meta game and force certain plots because there's a strict timeline um you know stuff like that and I, so i think there's a benefit of it for younger role players that have no plotting skills but like it's, as soon as you develop good communication and and social skills and plotting skills with your fellow role players the benefit goes away completely yeah brie says i think if i was told how many threads i could have i just want i just wouldn't want to write a bonus to having as many threads as you want slash can handle is that if i need a break from something i can go to some something else not mm -hmm. to say that it, it's only bonus, but you're not going to put out the best reply you can if you're feeling forced. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yep. And sometimes like you need that one thread to like just then make somebody else, like make another muse wake up or something. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah. Yeah, I, exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's hard. It's, I mean, and I and I know that the I like don't want to step on toes to people who who really like to write this way, but for me, I just I feel like I feel like that's way too controlling. Mm -hmm. um, and I, not, I know it makes me feel controlled. It's, it's taking away, it's taking away the RP. Yeah, part of it. Like it's it's not. There's no more emergent storytelling then because yeah, you have totally lost your your ability to control anything. And then you're at the mercy of another person. Yeah. Like, and it's a singular other person. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not like cause with RP, you're always at the mercy of another person, but it's like one singular R person. Yeah. And it, that just sucks. Like it just is not, it's no bueno for me. Yeah. I can't handle it either. <laughs> yeah. I remember like it used to be, it used to be the exception, like nobody did it that way. And then on discord, for whatever reason that it got really popular and I'm just like, oh my God, like why? Yeah. Like, why? <laughs> I also recognize that I've never played any RP that way. Um, oh, no. So that's the other thing, too. Well, I mean, we I've played in an RP where it was the opposite. Mm. Where, uh, he, where time wasn't fluid, so it was RP. It was, you had to be online when you wanted to write. Oh. 
uh, and that was chat rooms RPs, right? It was like the way back when, when there were basically only chat rooms. Yeah, I do um, remember that. And like, oh, cool, like I'll have a character. But I could never do that now. <laughs> and a date for the next night, which means we both had to be on that next night because things were happening in real time. Yeah. I 100% couldn't do that now. I don't have the time. Yeah. Uh, I also, also like when we were doing that, it was we were doing one-liners. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I write very differently than how I wrote when I was 16. Right. Um, but I've never been a part of one where I've been forced to write one thread at a time, but I just know me and I know it when it's something that I don't even fathom liking. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't go back to the old like chat room way that they used to do RP lock with time lock like that. And, um, and I, I tried like briefly at one point to uh, do that on Discord and it just, I couldn't handle it. Like I was like, why, why is your role play set up this way? This is so dumb. Oh my God, oh my God. Like I couldn't handle it. So, you know, that was, that was the one and only moment. <laughs> not that I typically join other people's role plays, unfortunately, uh, it's just not something I have time to do. But yeah, that particular piece was a huge turn off. <laughs> I no longer have the patience for other people's RP. Wow. <laughs> The I just have the patience for RP in general at the moment. <laughs> yeah, so Bye. for those of you guys that, that don't know, part of the reason we're doing this episode today is because um, Landon and I currently, to get our RP fix, are playing some tabletop games. We're not really doing text-based role play in groups at the moment, just, you know, one-on-one -on -one and, um, and in tabletop games. So we're trying to do some of these episodes that we had planned before this knowledge has left our brains. Because, you know, seven years of running RPs is just going to be scrubbed from our minds. I mean, you say that, but, like, you do forget things when you don't you do, do them regularly. Oh, no, you absolutely do. Yeah. So, um, last one? Yeah, last one. Um, any requirements about who you play or write with? Um, I, don't I, like, I, I don't like this. Yeah, I mean, this is, again, we talked about a little bit earlier where you're required to play or write with everybody, like, at a time. Like, you have to have a thread with everybody. And then I believe one of our guests, I want to say Sasha, mentioned, this is not something that I've played, but mentioned that there was an RP where everyone had to write with the admin. Oh, yeah. Admin. It maybe was her. I don't remember, but I remember the conversation you're talking about. That blows and my I, mind. That's so it, weird. But I, I understand, I just, I don't think forcing anybody to write anything that they don't want to write is going to yield positive results. Mm -hmm. uh, so like, no offense to that, like, person, I don't mean to call them out, but like, that's another example that we know exists in the world mm -hmm. of, of like being, of being told who and what to write with. Yep. Um, and it's like, no, um, the only exception to this rule ish is if you voluntarily sign up for a event where mm -hmm. you're partnered with somebody. Yeah. So we've had we've had events or spoof days in the past where we've like had people go under the a love potion uh, and they didn't get to choose who that effect was with. Yeah. So then you had to write, if you signed up for the event, you then had to write with that person uh, because you signed up for the event. Yep. And I think there's one other small exception that I want to mention. Oh. If you're the if you're the admin, if you are the yeah. main person that set up the role play, so I don't mean mods, but I mean like there's always like one, right? That's really the leader, you know? If that's you, then I do believe that you should write with everyone. You let them into your role play, you should at least try to write with them at least once, right? But I think that that's the difference between a rule and an expectation. Like yeah. you would never write that the admin has to write with everybody. No, um, I would never also, write that. <laughs> it's also, if the person doesn't want to write with you, <laughs> like it'd be, it'd be a weird, interesting thing. But if yeah. like, you don't want to necessarily make the person then feel that they have to write with you as the admin. Exactly. Which um, that has happened before too. Admin. Like we've had, we've had people join our role plays and they really just joined because like their friend was interested in our role play and yeah. they joined with their friend. And it's really the, the, that, that person that wanted to write with us. And then the friend joined and the friend only really wants to play with their one friend. And, and so then, you know, I, I would end up never writing with them, which is fine because they made that choice. Right. I didn't make that choice yeah. for so them. It's, again, it's that difference between a rule and an expectation. And I think that that like is a mod or an admin expectation that you should mm -hmm. that you should strive to write with every person at yeah. least once yeah if you're going to take um, the time to to do the to be like the main leader of the role play 
you should do that because otherwise it's just kind of like well why'd you let them in if they weren't worthy to write with you you know what i mean (laughs) that could be over time i mean and that's also another thing where it's like over time and it doesn't necessarily have to be every single character that that person makes like it could be a little bit looser yeah for sure yeah so those are the three that i can really think of that i don't like yeah those if i if i see things like that those are kind of like i really don't think this space is for me you know that's kind of what how those make me feel yes um it's not just it's not just like with some of the things like if i don't see hiatus requirements then i don't like it but i don't necessarily feel like completely unwelcome but if i see things like rp lock requirements about who you write or play with or a password in the rules like to me that space is not um suitable for karens <laughs> and i mean that is me not as the meme karen right <laughs> wait which uh, they're the same no <laughs> girl no. please <laughs> okay so yeah that's um that's the spicy part uh if we hurt your feelings i'm sorry that wasn't our intention it's just you know we're just trying to share our opinions and tell us if we hurt your feelings um some rules that we like that you hate there we go we'll be even then (laughs) exactly please hurt our feelings that's what we're here Mm -hmm. for that's true (laughs) um is there anything else that we want to say to wrap this up i don't think so okay this seems pretty well wrapped for me okay so on as far as the sims goes um landon is still on maternity leave because she's she's raising little torment right there and um and malcolm has now finally gotten his dream job and uh, hopefully he'll get promoted there too because he's got the skill point that he needs so he should be getting a promotion when he gets home from work hopefully that'll happen next time but i'm gonna go ahead and save um save my game and get it closed um and landon do you have an article for us today i do have an article for us today i was thinking um because it just i really just wanted to see a beautiful photo (laughs) Okay. And these are, these are some beautiful photos that were taken because there was a blood moon. What? Lip that happened earlier this month. Like the full moon was a blood moon eclipse. Oh my gosh. Um, so I'm throwing it in the chat and there's two beautiful, stunning photos that came from that. Or more wow. than two, I should say. But. Okay. I'm waiting for the game to close fully. As soon as it does, I will bring up the article. But um, but we love a good, just like, you know, aesthetic. <laughs> Super flower blood moon. Yeah, no, the aesthetic of the first one, I'm like, holy shit, man. <laughs> Lily. Oh, I love that name, Bree. That's beautiful. All right, Landon, if, your spare, a baby named a girl, oh. if your spare is a girl, we'll have, we'll have a Lily. Listen. Bree. I assume you want that for a sim, Brie, and not for, like, if they adopt a pet. Um, but let me know if, you, if you're if you saying that for, like, if they adopt a cat or a dog. Because that's an option, too. We'll get to name those. Okay, what's happening? The game's not closing. On. There we go. Oh. Oh. Are we back? Sorry. I accidentally paused everything for a second. <laughs> my bad <laughs> the sims is a massive game and i have lots of mods so it takes it a second to uh things. to do things yeah <sighs> but here we go it's opening now just a second and we will be y'all will be able to see it okay here we go so stunning photos of this morning's super flower blood moon holy crap that is beautiful yes, oh my I'm god that name is an aesthetic in itself look at this oh man i wonder what kind of lens they use and stuff to make this photo happen this is beautiful there's probably a lot of uh editing happening as well but i'm sure but like wow isn't that insane yeah oh here's another one badass this was in taiwan yep oh 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 this one looks good too oh i love this Oh, that's nice. That is, it's pretty nice. They got just a little, a little partial there in uh, California. So the rose, and then that one is gorgeous. Oh, oh, I think this is my favorite one that's with the trees, one. and it's so dark. Yeah, no, it's it's beautiful. 
Oh, I love this. It's just so nice to like be reminded that the earth is, uh, that the moon is so beautiful. And like, you can see these amazing things that are happening all around us every, every month. <laughs> and we have something so unique on our planet, you know, because of the, the moon is at just the right distance and size from earth that when it gets between the earth and the sun, we have eclipses. Most planets, this is not a possible phenomenon. Yeah. right and this is only a possible phenomenon on earth for a certain period of time eventually it will not be anymore because the distances between the earth and the moon will shift to the point that we don't get eclipses so much anymore that's so crazy to think about i mean and this yeah. is gonna be in the thousand million years but... oh yeah yeah not in our lifetimes or anything like that not i mean forever but they probably won't humans probably won't even be a thing anymore by the time that's not you know a thing but mm -hmm. or at least we won't be on the earth <laughs> but yeah maybe we'll maybe we'll be on um elon musk's mars colony oh no sorry i'll stop i'll stop i don't want to manifest it <laughs> dead inside um <laughs> but this is beautiful thank you for sharing these landon i really like these photos i'm staying on this one so much because i love it so much but these are it, all stunning it deserves to be a phone background I'm just it saying. really does oh this will make such a good phone background i hope this person um this instagram person put this as their phone background for a minute because this is a really good one <laughs> they deserve it mm -hmm. all, all right, right. y'all let's um i'm gonna find someone to raid while i'm working on that landon tell everybody where they can find you um, they can find me at Land in Maine on Instagram and TikTok or Land in Revere. Uh, nope, we're not going to go with that one. No, Land in Reverie uh, on Instagram and Etsy uh, they, or on TikTok and Etsy if they would like. Ooh. I post fun things and tarot related stuff. Uh -huh. uh, also, my Twitter is especially spicy. I had a pride uh, hot take, so you can come watch that. Oh, is it the, is it the, is it part of the kink at pride discourse? Yes. Which okay. I don't know why we're talking. Don't say it. Don't spoil it for me. I just got to go watch it. <laughs> don't, I don't want to know. I'll go watch your, your TikTok to find your hot it's take. It's not a TikTok. It's a, it's a, on oh. Twitter. oh, okay. On Twitter, on Twitter. Okay. You can find me wherever you want. All right. Very cool. Um, it looks like, I don't see anybody. I don't see anybody that's live right now. None of my friends are, are live. Um, I friend who is live okay so if you could then put their name in the twitch chat so that i can do the raid properly for them um and while landon is doing that i will tell y'all where to find me uh right here on twitch every thursday we have artistic license starting at 6 30 all times are eastern and we have interstage window starting at noon on saturdays and next week for interstage window what are we talking about landon what are we doing we are doing one of my favorite things. We are doing our first piece of media, our first media review, and we're going to be doing Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. That's right. I am, I am, this is therapizing can I, myself. Can okay, I I'm. Something? Can I, I was going to say, can I call you out on something? Yeah. <laughs> my favorite text that I received from Karen this week was, oh man, I'm a fan of the Harry Potter series again. <laughs> It's true. Okay, it's a little bit of therapy for me because, like, I I loved Harry Potter for so long. I met so many friends and, and made so many connections because of this. And so it was incredibly disappointing for me when a couple of years ago, you know, J.K. Rowling started liking those tweets. And then she started actually tweeting turfy stuff. And then she made that whole manifesto. And it just, like, it broke my heart on a level that a celebrity should not be able to do. Like, a ridiculous, stupid level. Like, um, I should not be letting a celebrity into my heart in that way. So, um, yeah, I didn't even want to, I didn't want nothing to do with anything Harry Potter for a while. So this is a little bit therapy for me trying to get over it, trying to like reconnect with the material. Um, so this is, this is going to be a, uh, a, a little bit of a dissection. There's probably going to be some negativity there. So if you don't want to hear, um, the ways in which Harry Potter sucks, don't, don't come because reading, rereading the books, I can say, uh, after all of that happened. I have a little bit of a different perspective on some things. However, I still absolutely love Harry Potter. Um, that has not changed. <laughs> and then we're going to get into it next week. And I think that a huge part of it is that we should probably discuss, and we'll talk about this too, is discussing uh, the fallout of everything too. Um, but yeah, no, it is. It, 
It's very, it's going to be very fun. I'm very excited. I'm very excited for this new form that we're going to be doing. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we like it. Hopefully the viewers like it. <laughs> I think y'all will like it. I think y'all will really enjoy it. <laughs> All right. And you know, a lot of this is going to be like, we're starting with Harry Potter because we're both super, super familiar with it. Oh, yeah. But a lot of this is going to be introducing Landon to things that she didn't watch when she was a teenager like the rest of us did. So <laughs> also, also making Karen read fairy porn. What? <laughs> yeah, we'll do that at some point, too. <laughs> All right. Um, so that being said, let's raid this pug zoomies. Let me open up their Twitch just to make sure that they're not like on a break or something. Um, and we'll go right into them. Oh, they are on a be right back. They but they're doing a 12 hour stream right now. Yeah. Holy crap. How long actually, are they? He was he subs to the show. He's watched it a few times for us. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, um, well, we're going to go ahead and raid. I know he's going to be right back right now, but um, but y'all be patient with him and uh, we're going to raid into Pug Zoomy. And he's very sweet. He's a very sweet guy. Okay. All right. Here we go, y'all. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, don't forget to make it a great day. And don't forget to be awesome. All right. Bye, y'all. Have fun.